All right, welcome back to the Power Baseball League. So I'm excited to walk through a neat process with you tonight. Uh, if you've been following along to date, what you've seen us do is create a essentially a baseball management system in the, in the Power Platform. And we've done that by using a variety of different tools. And the most recent one that we've struck up here is to create a web form to allow parents of children who are interested in participating to register online so that they don't have to fill in any forms. We don't have to take data over the phone or, or transcribe anything like that. They can just go direct to the source, fill in the web form that gives us everything we need. That's going to pour directly into our uh, environment that collects all the, the registration data, as well as all, all of our constituent data. And then we've got everything we need all in one spot. So it makes it really, really straightforward and easy. And so I'm going to walk you through the process um, that we followed to get that data from the web form into our Power App, uh, which is our Power Baseball League Power App. And so that we've used a combination of tools yet again. So we use customer voice to build out a form. Then we're using Power Automate to grab that data from the CDS environment, pull it out and do some checks on it. And in certain scenarios, then pass data into our uh, environment. So I'm gonna stop uh, sharing my screen or myself rather, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna walk you through what we've got set up here. So bear with me. Okay, so what we've done is we've started here with our Power App, and we did some work to get this stood up properly so that it was ready to roll. Um, but I'm going to walk you through adding a couple of steps that are really important, and it's basically replicating what we've already done. But I wanted to save some of the this the steps so that we could show you how it, how it all worked. Um, this was a little bit more complex, I think, than we maybe initially thought or realized. So we had a great conversation with Megan V. Walker a number of weeks ago. And then uh, more recently, Todd Mercer joined us and gave us kind of a, a great mapping session where we kind of talked through the logic that we would use and kind of fumbled around a little bit with our different ideas that we were batting back and forth and then landed on one. And then we gave it a try. And so truth be told, um, it, this is after some trial and error, we got this set up, a uh, great learning experience. And, and it really highlighted for me the importance of just diving in and actually trying to do what it is you're trying to do because um, you're not always gonna get it right on the first try and that's totally okay. I wanted to spare you that that fumbling around and uh, you know our trial and error and our failed flows and all that stuff. So we've got this set up, but just just please hear me when I say that uh, this absolutely was some trial and error. We were learning as we were going on some of this stuff. And um, as you know, the, these things change so rapidly that there were some new things that came up even in the time that we first started talking about this to now, you know, changes language with, with Dataverse and things like that, but also just um, some of the new features and functions that were rolled out that uh, gave us a bit of a surprise and give us something new to learn and new to work with. So what we've got on screen is the essentially the flow as it's designed. So what it's doing here is when a record's created. So this is really being driven by the form. When somebody fills in that that customer voice form, that data flows into our Dataverse environment. And so once it's in the Dataverse environment, we can trigger the flow saying when in this environment, when a new customer survey, uh, customer voice survey responses is received, um, then go ahead and trigger this flow. Right? And then the next thing that happens is we got to list the records. So um, as a quick highlight, when data is coming in in a customer voice, we've got the survey response itself, that's one record, and then appended or attached to that rather, we've got a number of the survey responses. So for every question, you've got the question and the response as a record. And so that uh, we have to list all of those out so that we have them available and then we can start to grab them. So that's what this list records tool does. It just grabs all the question responses that came in. Then we have an, uh, initializing the variables. And so we've got two, I'm gonna set another one up for you as we go, but what these are basically holding tanks or buckets that we're gonna put data in. There's really nothing there yet. All we're saying is we're gonna grab this data, we're gonna call it first name, it's gonna be a string of data. That's all we're saying for now. And so again, we're just creating that bucket. We've got two of those. Again, we're gonna create a new one as we go in a minute, but I wanna walk you through the logic first. And then we have apply to each, which is applying to each one of the records that we have coming in. And it's we're asking it to grab the question record. And then we've got some check conditions coming in. So we say, check if it's the first name. So if the question text is equal to first name, then set that variable that we initialized earlier. So the first name variable to whatever the first name is. So that's the response text. Um, that response text is coming from this list records. Okay, so again, the data is coming in, we're listing out all the records, we're initializing these or creating these buckets, 
and then we're going to go ahead and say check the question record and if the question text is this then do the following and you'll notice we've got a couple of these so we've got check first name we've got check last name i'm going to create one for email with you in a minute and then we've got the create the caregiver record which is what we're trying to accomplish in this go so all we want to do is grab that information create the first name last name and email address and the contact type which i'll explain when we get there and so that's that create caregiver record, that's what's pushing this data from the customer voice response into our CDS environment for the Power Baseball League. So kind of a neat one, again, took some, some banging around a little bit to get the, the right answers, but we've got it and it's pretty, pretty slick. So again, wanna walk you through how we achieve this. So initializing the variables are the first thing, is the first thing I wanna show you. And it's really straightforward. We're just gonna go ahead and add a new step. It's gonna be add an action. I'm going to just type in far, and we're going to go ahead and select initialize a variable. We're going to call this email address, and it's going to be a string. And again, this is just a holding tank. So there's nothing else to do here. This is just creating the bucket where we're going to put that data. And that's going to be really, really important when we get to the create caregiver, because we can then pull those variables into our equation as we go. So I'll show you that. So that's the first part. I'm going to go ahead and rename this just to keep it clean and call it uh, we'll say initialize email address variable. And I'm going to just clean this one up too. We don't need that two in there. Okay, so we've got those. Now we've got our first name, our last name, and our email address. I mentioned contact type. That's a selection on the form. So we don't actually have to do anything at this point in this create caregiver record because we already know what kind of record it's going to be. So I'll show you that when we get there. Now, when we get into the apply to each, things get a little bit unwieldy, a little anyways. So as we go, you see we've got um, the select the value from the output steps, so from, the, from the previous steps rather, up here. And so we're grabbing the value and we're saying get the question record and check if it's first name, check if it's last name. We're gonna add another one for check if it's email. So what I'm gonna say is add an action, go ahead and say, uh, we're going to go right in here, this control. We've already got the condition here. So I'll go ahead and say, do this. We're creating another condi condition. We're going to say, if the question record. So the question record says, uh, if you'll notice here as we scroll down, just let me scroll this down here. We can even just type in question text. So there's the question text is equal to, and we want it to say email address. If that's true, then we want to go ahead. We're going to add another action. If yes, we're going to say var or variable. We're going to go ahead and set the variable. And we now have the option to pick where from. So we're going to say from the email address, right, that we created earlier up above. That's our new variable, email address. And we're going to set that to the text from the response. So we're going to say response and it's right here. So it's coming from the list records up top. So remember, one of the first things that happened in this flow was to, to grab all of the responses. And so we want the value, the response from that text, from that list records. So we've got, a, we've got that set up now. And, and again, I wanna just to keep things clean, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this condition and we'll call this check if email address. And so now we've got our variable set up. We've gone ahead and created our next check condition and put the text in to set the variable if it's true. Now we can go ahead and click into this create contact. Let's minimize this. So we wanna do a couple things. We wanna put the variables in the right fields. So we've got a last name field on our caregiver record. We're gonna go ahead and grab the last name variable. We're gonna go down to the first name. We'll pull the, oh, scroll down. We'll pull the first name variable. We have an email address. We'll go ahead and pull the email address. And I mentioned the caregiver um, as the contact type. So if we scroll down here, we've got lots of different fields. One of them is contact type. We're gonna go ahead and set that to be the caregiver value because we already know that this is the caregiver, okay? So we go ahead and set that up. Everything else is good to go. Now, if we had a bunch of other variables, of course, we would have set the initialize those variables, set the con conditions to pull the right information, set the variable, and then we would put all of that data into our form. We're trying to keep it super simple for you right now uh, and for ourselves, frankly. And so that's all we want to accomplish in this first go. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And I'm gonna run this test 
against a record that we've already tried against. And so now that it's saved, everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and test. We'll use a record that we recently tried. I'm going to go ahead and test that. Our flow is now running. We've got the, the green light here on the first one. And so as we wait here, you're going to see things are going ahead. They're doing It's doing its job. And as it completes, we see now get the green, the, the green light, which is great news, meaning everything happened. So let's just click through and see what all happened. So we've got record was created. That was what our test was happening on. We've got all the list records. So it's grabbed all those question responses. We've initialized our three variables. We go into the apply to each and we see for the first name, we've got check if first name, the expression was true. Now here you can see we've got all the different results that came in on this. So if I click through to the next one, you'll see that it's false, which means that this condition was not set. If I go back to question one, we see that it was true. So it was set and that variable is M test. Okay. For the last name, same, same situation. Now, naturally, last name is going to be a different question response. So number one wasn't true. That's why this isn't hasn't done anything. But if I go through, we're going to find there's number two, number three, number four is the right one. That's where it grabbed last name, which we set in here as our test date. Okay. And then we've got our email address, which was number five. And so it was true. So that means question five was the one that matched email address. And it's going to head and set the email address to mtest at nov29.fake as our email address, right? Just a playful address. So what we can do with that, now what that means is all that worked properly and it created the record. We see the green light here. So if I jump into our environment and I refresh our list, we should see mtest November 29th and it's got first name, last name, and email address. And so what's really neat about that is it's pulled that information from our form that you saw in a previous video. That form came into CDS. It triggered our flow. Our flow went through the process, did its thing, and then pushed that data into our Power Baseball League. So really, really cool to see that all come together. And again, if you're giving this a shot and you're running into hurdles and, and walls and you're not getting it, um, hang in there, stick with it. So Kylie and I spent uh, a chunk of time together on a, on a call we went back and forth, making sure that we had the right fields and we absolutely made some mistakes. But as we kind of piece together the logic and work through it and try different things, we realized what we were, you know, what we were missing and, and we corrected those things and away we went. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an overview of how we can create this flow. Now our next venture is going to be to parse out the child data. So we're going to build this flow uh, a little further where we can grab more information from the child data. And if you remember from a few weeks ago, we've got questions about whether there's one, two, three, or multiple children. So we're going to go ahead and our last video for this piece anyways will be to go ahead and create one that grabs the child data and creates a child related record so we're going to give that a go uh, in an upcoming uh, video as we get toward the end of uh, this crazy 2020 year and, uh, and then we'll go from there so we hope again hope that this brings you some um insight into how to go go about building one of these uh, feel free to watch again share with all your friends and we hope to see you next time thanks for watching have a great day